my friends, how are you? I love you all and uh, thank you so much. This is fellowship. This is what fellowship means. Outreaching. You coming, watching these videos, me having the chance to talk to you. And even if I do not see you with these eyes, I can see you with the eyes of my faith. You know the music, I got you used to. Every time I'm using his music with love, I will tell you his name. I'm not doing it because I'm obliged, because uh, I want to show my gratitude and love. Brother David Lastra, beautiful spiritual music. You find his content on YouTube. Deep instrumental worship. So go for it. If you want more, more music, good quality as you hear already. I'm using his music in almost every single video that I do. So. So now brothers, sisters, big the chosen fans, big chosen fans, and not only generally the chosen, but particularly Jonathan. I have a video, now, don't know now how many of you have seen it. Hopefully you didn't see it, so many of you will come and see. It's a video from a couple of weeks ago. News Nation interview Jonathan and I think this time the questions are a bit more um, substantial well according to my humble opinion now you take a look and tell me am I right or not anyway it's a good occasion to see Jonathan speaking again well, we enjoy that don't we <laughs> so as usual friends three two one when you knew you were meant to be called to be an actor? An actor? Oh. Um, I think when I, when I booked the first thing I ever auditioned for, I thought, oh, maybe there's something here. Uh, and that was, uh, that was like when I was 23, but I, I, I didn't really think about the long-term implications. I just thought, well, I didn't expect to get that job, and maybe God had something in mind for me as a performer. Did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up, when you were a kid, or when you were in like high school? I wanted to, uh, yeah, well, <clears throat> well, those are two different answers. Um, as a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. As in high school, I know I wanted to be in film. I thought I was gonna go into special effects. I went to an art school, I studied film, and then, uh, and then I realized, because I went to art school in New York, we didn't quite have the programs that they have in California for special effects training. So I thought, once I went to film school, I thought, you know what, maybe I'll be a director. And then I, I, uh, I had taken some acting classes as prerequisites to, you know, because we had to. And then I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I should give acting a shot just to know what an actor goes through to be a better director so I can direct them better. And then I ended up auditioning for this one job for MTV and I booked it. I'm like, wait a second, what does that mean? So there were signs that you were in your wheelhouse and then yeah. you end up auditioning for the role of Jesus. Many, 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 many years later, yes. <clears throat> and obviously, you know, it's been a journey. But how much has Jonathan Rumi's life changed? You are already very much a faithful man. Faith has always been important to you from what I've read. But now that you've really you have the role of a lifetime. How is it different from, say, a decade ago? Uh, I mean, it's, it's indescribably different. It's unquantifiably different. It's, uh, it's, it's heads and tails different. Um, you know, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I was just getting started in LA, really. I was just a couple of years in LA, three years in LA. And you have an idea of how you think your career is going to go, what steps to follow, and then you have reality. And uh, very often the two don't quite, you know, um, line up. Yeah, they don't really they don't really sync up. And uh, and so I got to a point where I was basically desperate and uh, out of money and out of food, and and I just realized in that moment 
that I had no other alternative but to completely and wholly rely on my faith and um, to just offer everything up in prayer, to surrender my notions, my concept of what it meant to, to have a career, to, to be successful, to, to survive, and offer that up to God and just say, God, you show me what, where you want me to go and what you want me to do because at this point I'm out of options and I'm giving it to you. And he did. He did that very day that I actually had that made that prayer and changed my life in an instant, in a matter of hours, from the time I had this prayer to the time I, I came back to my apartment. I left my house, come back, and all of a sudden I experienced this incredible financial windfall that came out of nowhere and made me realize that, okay, that's that was the thing that I hadn't done. So I hadn't surrendered. I hadn't given it up. And you and Dallas use that word. Do you believe that you two were divinely connected? Yeah, I think this is part of God's plan for sure. When you meet people who know you play Jesus, do you think that you have some sense of responsibility to portray him? I mean, from the Gospels, the book of Matthew, you know, learn from me, take my yoke upon you, for I am meek and lonely of heart. This show is all about a different depiction of Jesus than maybe the world has ever seen. Do you feel responsible for making sure that that real image of Jesus is known? I feel responsible to show up and give everything that I have to this role. And then what God does with it is up to him. Yeah, I have to just continue to participate and let him lead. And as long as I do that, everything is beyond my comprehension and better than I could have ever thought through it myself. How do you think you've been able to so successfully be in this role? I mean, people have remarked at how much you have brought your heart, brought your faith, and brought this sense of peace. I mean, watching you on camera, there's no denying that it's, it's special. Uh, grace, just God's grace, that's, that's how I'm able to be here. In terms of people who maybe are not of faith, but they have heard about the show, how would you describe the show to them? They've never walked in a church. The show is a, uh, a very well-told historical drama about the life of Jesus and his disciples. And he is a man who changed the world, whether or not you believe he was the son of God or is God. Uh, he changed the world, uh, you know, uh, forever. And, uh, and so I think there's a character that anyone who watches the show, there's at least one character that anybody who watches the show will be able to identify with. And nine out of ten people can't get through an episode without weeping or connecting or being reminded of some part of their own life that they see played out but brought into the light and uplifted. And, uh, and I think what we, what we do, what we make with the show, is uh, <clears throat> is such a relief compared to all the darkness that's in media right now. All this, a lot of the storytelling that we see in um, most major networks and streaming networks. There's just so much darkness and heaviness, and and it's uh, it's 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 the world is dark and you know heavy to begin with, especially right now. And so to have uh, a show that kind of brings a ray of light and gives people hope, uh, gives people something to believe in that is bigger than themselves, I think, I think is, a, is a great service to, to culture and to the world. Are you changing the world? God's changing the world through the project that I'm working on. Now that was the, so, a wonderful human being, Jonathan Rumi, speaking. How many times is a so... Uh, Imagine a book wide open. We can see into his heart. And that's why he is so lovable. And that's why he has this capacity easily to connect with people. Even though many of you, maybe you don't know, he is an introverted. Well, probably this is the best way to be is many times I'm thinking. 
I was too much and I extroverted and um, that brought me some pain along the way maybe it's better to just keep for yourself and God not to get yourself open so easily to people when it's about your very personal life when it's about your career or what Jonathan is doing here he's talking about this part of his life that part that um, there's no point in keeping just for you it's faith it's telling others about what's more important in life and there's nothing more important than Jesus nothing many will come to us and say those that do not understand what do you mean it's nothing more important there's nothing brother <laughs> my friend there's nothing more important than Jesus why is that you are focused on your career okay but then you will get old I will get old we all get old we're not gonna be able to always be on the work field and then what's gonna happen so it's something that passes by are you focused on what else to get love from people around you look at people nowadays how empty they are inside and they try to fill that emptiness and void with anything and everything relationships upon relationship changing partners all over again and again and again oh why is that well because they're all inside they're empty and they try to fill that emptiness with something they focus on this they don't realize that Jesus is more important are they happy they live for the weekend many of them because on weekend they go and party party they try to fill the emptiness and void in their heart with a couple of hours in which they just drink and dance and I don't know things like that been there done that not so much proud of it they focus on that are they happy no they're not no they're empty inside those moments in which they can be honest with themselves and they realize that uh, it's not something that uh, gives them something substantive like substantial that was the word that I was looking for substantial for their life but as we love Jesus we know that we're doing the right thing we focus on the right things and that's what Jonathan is sharing with everyone Let's do the same and if you're blessed that uh, you have this capacity to express your faith in your career like what Jonathan is doing now he said this interesting word that his uh, faith and his career married <laughs> I like this I like this probably I'm gonna use this in uh, my preaching six as well so yes walk with Christ and walk for Christ live your life in such a way that you are light shun darkness be Jesus every day see you soon friends thank you for watching a pinto <laughs> like French used to say and they're still saying and they will forever say it a pinto friends